Hey Internet, for this video I'm going to install a Ryzen CPU and heatsink onto a motherboard. This is the Ryzen 7 1700 and an Asus B350 socket AM4 motherboard. From the experiences between computer building friends and myself, installing the CPU and heatsink can be a terrifying experience especially if it's your first time building a PC, with the CPU pins being exposed or the motherboard socket possibly getting dust in them. It feels like if something's gonna go wrong, it's gonna happen at this part and you won't notice it until after the machine is put together. For first time PC builders, I can assure you that computer parts are incredibly durable and the chances of something actually going wrong, especially if you do things carefully, is extremely low. That being said, watching videos of someone actually doing the PC building can be a big help and a confidence boost. I'm just an average skills guy installing a CPU and heatsink into a motherboard. Basically anyone can do this. That being said, let's start. This is the motherboard. For some reason, it did not come with a socket cover. Then again, this is my first AMD build in years. I mostly built Intel-based computers and they always had a socket cover on the motherboard. I don't know if the board itself is missing a cover or it simply did not come with one. Anyways, I wore a beanie while doing this to make sure no dandruff or any microscopic stuff from my hair would drop into the socket. Another safety thing you can do is wear an anti-static wristband. I didn't wear one and I'm lucky no static discharge happened, but try it and get yourself grounded before starting your project. I'm going to turn the motherboard so the latch is facing down, that way the next part will be easier to see. This is the Ryzen CPU. It's a Ryzen 7 1700 8-core 16-thread processor. Basically installing the CPU is done the same exact way for any version of Ryzen. So if you got a Ryzen 3, 5, or 9, you've come to the right video. AMD CPUs tend to have the pins on the CPU itself, whereas Intel CPUs have contacts on the CPUs and pins on the motherboard. Thought I'd add that info in case you plan on doing an Intel build at some point. I'm guessing they do that so someone will never mistakenly install an AMD CPU on an Intel socket motherboard and vice versa. That being said, notice on the bottom left corner of the Ryzen CPU is a little triangle. That acts as a guide that matches with the motherboard socket. The CPU can only go into the motherboard in a specific way and it just slips right in. There's no force needed. The CPU will basically drop right in when correctly orientated. Zooming into the motherboard socket, you can see the bottom left has the same little triangle. When putting in the processor as we'll do later, you place the CPU into the socket where the triangles are matching. There may be a technical term for the triangles, but I don't know it or care for that matter. Okay, let's install the CPU. Don't mind the shaky fingers. Push down the latch and move it slightly to the right, then pull it up so it unlocks like so. Slip the CPU into the socket, making sure the bottom left triangles are matched up between the CPU and socket. Even with my awkward hands, it just goes to show you don't need to be as precise as a surgeon to install a CPU. If done right, it should slip right in. Do not push down. There's supposed to be no resistance when placing the CPU into the socket. When placed into the socket properly, it should look like this. Now lock the CPU into the socket by pushing down the latch so that it's locked into place like so. This is what a properly installed and locked CPU should look like. Now to install the heatsink. And I'm not going to lie, this can be incredibly annoying. Not because of the mounting bracket or anything, but from previous experience, this to me is... You'll find out when you do it too, trust me. This is the rate cooler that some Ryzen 7s come with. If you got a third party cooler, then you should probably watch a video install for that instead. I will admit the Wraith cooler is a nice cooling option. It isn't loud and has an awesome looking red LED light around the fan. Also it comes with thermal paste pre-applied. If you're not going to overclock to insane speeds, the Wraith Spire and its thermal paste is more than enough to cool down a Ryzen 7 1700 and below. To mount the heatsink, first unscrew the mounting brackets. Once they're out, put them in the motherboard box for safekeeping. The heatsink mount is rectangular, so you can only orient the heatsink two ways. Depending on your motherboard, you'll want to orient it so that it has the most space between the other slots like the RAM. Place the heatsink on top of the CPU with the screws on each hole like so. 
screw into the mount, but don't go all the way in yet because the heatsink will start to lean on that side if you decide to screw it all the way. Instead, partially screw it in so that it's inside the bracket but not all the way. Leave some slack. This is actually easier said than done. To be honest, while shooting this video, every time I screwed in one corner, it leaned way too much on that side and I could not screw it in the opposite. I actually gave up filming that part since it literally took a good 15 minutes to get the screws inside just enough in one corner but not impossible to screw into the other. My camera battery died and no good footage was saved, so I'm just fast forwarding to when I got them in. This is what it looks like when all four screws are screwed into the bracket. It was annoying trying to screw one corner in partially then screw in the opposite corner. Because I often put too much slack and the opposite corner screw would pop out while I'm screwing one side in and it took quite a few attempts to get the right amount of slack so that the opposite screw wouldn't pop off. My tip is to start with the opposite corners diagonally. Once you've got two corners screwed in, the last two should be easy. Once every screw is screwed in partially, tighten the screws. Don't screw it in past where it stops. Once the resistance feels a little hard, it's screwed in tight enough. Use this video as a reference because I did leave a tiny amount of slack on each screw. Use good judgment. As long as the CPU and heatsink are making full contact and the heatsink is screwed in deep enough so none of the corners will pop right out, then you're doing it right. Lastly, once the heatsink is installed, connect the 4-pin power connector to the motherboard. There's usually multiple 4-pin connectors on a motherboard, but look for the one that says CPU fan. You can't really see it on here, but most motherboards have a label on the 4-pin connectors on what should be connected in them. You can actually see in this angle upside down that it says CPU fan with a pointed arrow on the 4-pin connector. Alright, now I wouldn't be ending the video here without showing the computer posting. That would just be irresponsible. So let's fast forward to right before I turn on the computer for the first time. As expected, it powers on. Asus ROG Strix B350 with the AMD Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. If I had screwed up at all, it wouldn't have posted. But let's take it further. Let me show Windows running on this computer. Got past the Windows install, so it's all good. No problems. Like I mentioned earlier, the Rate Spire cooler is pretty neat with its red circle LED light. But let's see how it deals with thermals while running a benchmark. Sorry for the shaky camera here. It was impromptu. I was like, hey, let me record myself doing a benchmark to show the computer doesn't crash while it's doing something. The min and max temp values are seen here on HW Monitor, which is a free app that you can use to view various temps throughout the computer's internals. 30-ish Celsius on the minimum side and 50 Celsius-ish on the max side. 30 on the low side is idle and the high side is reached while running this benchmark. I can attest that this computer runs stable, as I have already ran some gaming benchmarks on this machine that are going to be uploaded in the future. And that's it. The CPU and heatsink install was a success. Hit that like button if you found this video useful and leave a comment if there's any more pro tips in PC building that myself and the rest of the internet can find useful. Thanks for watching.